reminds me. <laughs> 14! <laughs> 14 hard years! But I bet you he never had a year <laughs> where he had no bids. He might have had to twist an arm or two, but he never had a year with no bids. Uh, so, John's committee is going to put on an errand next year unless if you get a good classic errand bid by September 30th, if somebody here says, oh, the heck with that, I'm going to my place. Okay? But John Nell, John's National Events Chair, um, we're looking for a high power waiver of 3,000 feet. It's not, you know, you don't have to be monster high, but Narum bid, if you want to do a classic Narum, John will, let, John will be happy to have it by September 30th. Otherwise, he's going to put it on and it's going to be something a little different. It's still going to be a Narum, it's still going to have a national championship, but it's not going to be most likely, not going to be a five day thing with a two day weekend ahead of time. Got no bid, got no choice. The, the rubber finally hit the road. We also um, did something fairly, un, it's not unprecedented, but it's certainly unusual. Um, we made, the Board of Trustees made three big book changes, um, by, essentially by fiat. It was unanimous, so I mean, there, wasn't, there was a lot of very vigorous discussion, but it was all about how much further to go, and we but dialed it back. There's three things we're gonna do. First thing we're gonna do, and this is partly because uh, with a shorter NARAM, it's going to be harder to do a seven-day R&D and have people judge it. So we're going to require that R&D entries be submitted two weeks ahead of time, um, whenever R&D is held. So if it's held as a NARAM or a NARCON or wherever that gets done, we're going to ask for two weeks ahead of time. This will also help us get them on the web uh, and our, we're saving all the R&D reports, right? Our crediting them on the web. So this will help us do that as well. We don't have to scan them. We already have the website set up, so this applies starting at the afternoon. So that's one change that Board of Trustees made. Second thing we did, this might be a little unpopular, we limited the number, of, limited the size of teams in the team division to three members, two or three, not six or eight. Not to say anything against the larger teams that we've seen, but I didn't want it to be a whole section. And I don't think uh, an RCP would have ever passed for something like that. And we said, you know, this is not helping the integrity. The, it's not an integrity thing. It's not helping the, the uh, perception of the competition by new people coming in. Well, maybe I can do better in competition if I work with my buddy and then I see, you know, the, uh, the, uh, team, the championship team with the six nas former national champions or the whole set. It's just, it, so two or three people, it's kind of a classic team structure. I think that was probably an oversight in the rules, but we kind of fixed it. The third one is to introduce a new event. So we, it's a miscellaneous event called Mentorship. The purpose of the event is to encourage expanded participation of NAR members in rocket competition. It's got a weighting factor of 15, so less than Blue Splatter and more than Spotlight. Um, it will be held at all sanctioned contests except record trials. It will not count against the weighting factor for a contest, so this is sort of an extra. Whenever you're doing a contest, you get this event for free. Um, the scoring is, essentially, I'll give you the, you can read the, the fine print, but the, the basic idea is every mentor, every mentee, every new person you bring to a contest gets you one point. Most points wins first place. You can't get any placements for zero. <laughs> so. Uh, somebody brings three, somebody brings two, somebody brings one, and you hand out three places, you, play, you score them the same way, you always score things, first place, 10 points, times contest, times 15. That's the new event. So this is a, an attempt to draw more people, to spread the word, to get even the one guy out in you know Minnesota or wherever that doesn't do contests on a regular basis to start spreading the word and getting more people in the contest. It's an experiment. It, may, it could have been a provisional event, but um, having trustees do it that would have been even more interesting. So we just said, if it doesn't work, we'll stop doing it. Yes? No, that's like any NAR member bringing any other NAR member to a con. It doesn't have to be like within the same section or the same. Right. You can bring your kid. Well, I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and there will be some of that. That's fine. That's still a new person. You have to be a NAR member as a competitor. The person you bring has to be a NAR <clears throat> member. New means they didn't score any points last year. So maybe Mary Wolf gets to be a mentee, I don't know. But, but the point <laughs> in the long run, in the long run, we want more people coming to contests. And one way to do that is to take advantage of the competitive energy in this room, in this very room, 
capitalizing, I can get 15, I know, with 600 <laughs> right now. <laughs> Great, that's what we want, right? It's a small, it's not a way you back your 800, so it's a small but measurable thing that we're gonna try to do. More questions? Well, where I was going with that was, everything is so interconnected electronically, you could be mentoring somebody on the other side of the country if they put you down as your, their mentor, mm -hmm. if they go to some, I, Jeez, I mean, you, sorry. It wasn't intended, but. Well, no, 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 no. I, so I so they have to be at the for that contest. Names them at that, that contest. contest. So both the mentor and mentee have that's to be the at intent. the same time. Yeah. Okay. That's the intent. Okay. Yeah. So no, you can't go find I just No proxy apply. flights either, right? Oh, yeah, this is a spot for that guy. This is a spot for that guy. No, 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 no. Understand. Yes. Are we going to grandfather current teams? Are we going to be a person? There was no intent to do that after this contest here. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple teams that get. I mean, you laid off. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can be on my team. I'll pay you twice whatever they're paying. <laughs> wait, wait, they better not be paying. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to try some stuff, right? We're going to try to try to bend the curve, as they used to say about other other issues. Um, try to get competition. Up. We're going to try to make NARAM a more attendable event, drawing more people going to try to change national events to be a little more accessible to people. It's going to be worth a try. Bear with us. Yes? For anybody that might not be aware, there have been uh, several arms where there have been uh, four days, and for the most part, you don't even notice the difference. So then yeah. the what if it's three? What if it's two? But you're right. Um, um, Great Meadow had a uh, day off in the middle. Yeah. That was still four plus a two-day weekend. Yeah. So, let, so, we quickly realized that there are all these explosions of ideas, and John gets to say, okay, we'll get some focus groups, we'll do some surveys, we'll try to figure out. What we don't want to do is come to a NARAM next year with 70 people, and the NARAM after that with 50 people, and the NARAM after, you know? That's, yes? Have you talked about this problem with competition, and thought about like putting some of these ideas about competition in the sport rocketry, and how, and how, how abundant is the sport rocketry with the membership in general, is that? Um, is the question, do we have more, do we need more competition articles in sport rocketry or do we need to discuss the issues of declining competition in sport rocketry? Both. Okay, d d having a discussion about declining contests, I, I don't think Tom would accept that article. I would, I would back him up on that. I think, <laughs> I think having that discussion is valuable. We need to have that discussion and I think the but it's, it's a matter of how do we get it out there, though. Right. So we, we're going to have to try lots of different ways. And it doesn't have to be all on NAR, and I'm sure it won't be all on NAR-sponsored venues, right? We have a Facebook page, that'll be, but we're not doing politics on that. But we have Contest Rock, so that'll be interesting this month. No, we're going to do it. <laughs> we, we, so we have lots of ways of doing that. It's, we have it's a matter of how can you get it out into the community in general beyond the contest. Right, so the section that just got founded in, you know, eastern subnormal Iowa doesn't know from contest, they heard about high power on the web and thought they'd get into that. How do you, how do you start proselytizing to them? It's a yeah. very good question. That's what we need to do, though. Is there a target date for an announcement for NARAM 58 so people can plan there next year? September 30th. So that will be the announcement where it is, or is that just give them a week to look at the at, at any? But yeah, it will be in that ballpark. It sends me something on September 29th. We will do our best. To right, but if you don't get something and you're going to the new format, we have plans. We sort of have plans. Okay, so there we is. We think we can do it by September 30th. There is a plan B essentially. Yeah. Well, it's a yeah. Sure. Plan yeah. Plan it's, not, it's not about secret. It's about trying to figure out if you're going to do something different. You really want, you know, if you suppose we had a site, you still got to say, well, what are the dates? Is it a military site? Do they care about weekends? Do they care about weekdays? Is it going to be three days? Going to be four days? It'll take a, it'll take a little. So, 
I would love to see another classic NARAM bid just because we all have fun doing it, but I would like to have more NARAM members sharing that fun. 18 years, I'll give you my next one. Okay. <laughs> Deal, write it down. <laughs> Secretary, I'll take it All right, so this is so that this, ultimately, if we're, if we're successful, we will have a, a contest rocketry community that's a big, significant hunk of NAR that can no longer be ignored, just like the level three flyers, just like the teachers, you know, just like all those other groups. That's kind of a goal, because that's, this is what we are. We are contest rocketeers by birth. So just to finish up, our value proposition is that for 62 bucks a year and $25 if you're 2500 um, we are the best value in the hobby and we should just tell anybody. You know, I keep seeing these people um, asking on various forums, you know, should I join Triple A or should I join NAR? I don't think the answer is well, join the club that's nearest you. Right? If you've got two clubs and one's five minutes further away, what you look at is we got a magazine, we have five million dollars of insurance, we have fire insurance, we do the same certifications, we do international competition, at least have access to international competition. Um, I don't think there's a there's a no, I can't say that because but that would be impolitic. But you guys can. Yes. This is a comment. I realize competition is the focus, but we'd like to see on that international involvement. Um, no, several of us went to Thunder Down Under and had a great time. Oh, well, it's going to happen that. again in 2018. Awesome. It would be nice to see an additional NAR participation there at Thunder Down Under. I, I, got, I got yelled at by the Triple E folks for, uh, for doing that relationship with Thunder Down Under and, and the association down there because we entered a joint agreement that said we'd accept their certification, they'd accept ours, even though they don't plan to ship us motors and we don't plan to ship them. It was hilarious. <laughs> I agree with you. We should be doing as much, and we do international, we have international competition and, and other kinds of international relationships everywhere. And the insurance issue is a local issue, right? The Australians don't believe that Triple insurance covers them. We know our insurance doesn't cover them. They get their own insurance. In fact, they're required by law to have some ungodly large bond, and they do it. So yeah, they need us members for a day, basically. Yeah. It's, it's, so let let them handle that problem. We'll put the structure in place in the web, and so the web is international. Everybody gets. You should see the Facebook membership. Holy cow! I've projected more members. <laughs> no, I well, whatever. Iran does not. <laughs> get to be members of the Facebook page <laughs> without serious interest in model rocketry. Okay, what can you do? Fly safely. Thank you very much. Recruit new NAR members, new flyers, new competitors. Take your own turn volunteering. Right? We have a lot of people that have... How many people here have been NARAM CDs? Okay. So there's about three quarters to 90% of you that have a turn coming up, I can tell you. <laughs> Do community outreach. <laughs> yes. You got to pass. <laughs> you won our CDs last year. You got the honor of um, Do community outreach to your, your community leaders before bad things happen, right? You got you got a parks board that's being cantankerous. Tell them. Make, a, make them a pitch. Get a whole school bunch of school kids and get an article on the paper just before you make the pitch. It, it does wonders to have kind of a always out looking approach and not, oh, I want to get my rocket off and then go home without helping kick down the, wet, the, the range all the time. Um, make sure everyone knows and takes advantages of our scholarships and grants. They did that this year. I probably should, might have been a little milder than we, we, We've had grants not go, um, not taken, right? So if you're an R member and you're going to college, this is money you can get. And we are committed to giving it to you. All you got to do is jump through the same hoops everybody else does. Be safe, have fun, pay forward. Is that it? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Oh, Question, yes. Well, I'm interested in, in uh, trying to make a farm team out of the kids from school age. And I'm from Arizona. So a lot of things I see is that there's a lot of homeschool kids. And we've got a lot of families that have four kids and family. And so they're asking me, oh, we'd like to start a NAR section for the, the kind of the, the loosely affiliated groups of families that are teaching. So I'm wondering if we can do some kind of thing where we have like a school-type club 
where it's, it's maybe a fixed fee so that all the kids that are launching are covered by the insurance, but yet the families aren't paying $25 a member times three or four. So that's a lot of money for those, those families, yeah. especially when they're not rocket people. And we're trying to get them to be rocket people. And, and right now I see, this is all great if you've already been bitten by the buck. Mm -hmm. Trying to get people interested and infected with the, the, the <laughs> NAR fund is, is something I think, it looks like to me for at least maybe a couple of years or something you could offer like uh, smaller costs for families. Because uh, you know, if you think, oh, if I'm an adult, well, I'd pay 60 bucks. Well, so, so family price. members after the first are reduced price. Right, but the question is, is what are Could you make it like, uh, what would a family afford? $25 for family, yeah. See what I'm saying? So, they all so there's still a risk to the insurance that, right. let, me, let me give you two answers. Okay. The, the non-presidential answer, turn off that for a minute. <laughs> the non-presidential answer is, you need a section to sponsor a launch, and the people who are not insured are only putting themselves at risk, right? Because the section is still insured, the landowner is still insured. If they can't afford a NAR membership, they're not putting a lot at risk. So that's the glib answer. It's not a great answer, but you know, people, I, my dad used to launch rockets in the front yard with safety precautions that would make Steve's hair curl. So, a little slow. <laughs> uh, you had a lot of hair back then, but then you heard, caught wind of what he was doing. Um, the, the, more official answer is we get the same thing from TARC teams and SLI teams um, all the time. And the answer, the answer has to be those teams are also, especially when they start experimenting with not just building an app and launching it, but doing their own work, they are a risk on the insurance. So they, they, they're looked at as, by both us, but more importantly our insurance brokers, as um, part of the, what their, their dues are going for is that insurance. It was a challenging thing. Right. And I just wonder if there's some way if we could spend some time thinking about if there's a special structure you can come up with for groups of school children that are, we, we want to get them involved and interested. And then, you know, later on, maybe. Well, we, we, have, the, we have, have the TARC program. Well, yeah, but that, see, that's, again, you have to be in Rockford Street to even know about it. Don't they have the school teams and the teachers? We have we have we have ways for teacher teachers and students to be TARC teams for cheap, but we don't have. I want to do a rocket club and form a NAR section, and I want to be have it composed of thirty kids and an adult, and only one of them is a NAR member. That's no, but I thought we had the deal where you could get the reduced price for the students if the teacher was a member, regardless of TARC. Yes, it's still a price. It's twelve dollars. Yeah, it's still twelve dollars, but it's not tied to just TARC. Is that right? right. I'll, I can check that. Yeah. So have you looked at that? It's twelve dollars per student. Look in the TARC section and see whether it says any team or just TARC teams. It might just say TARC teams. Because I'm just going to say, you know, I think more okay. resolution is All right, we'll go back and look that up. It's Thank never, you. It's never been heavily publicized, but we did for so the reasons of oh, curl this hair. Okay, we'll check on it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ted, is there any way to help with this that we can get some sort of Demographic breakdown by state of membership, as in how many members are in each state? Sure, we can do all that. We have a database now. Um, <laughs> I, I get a request that such an activity is probably every week for somebody asking, hey, for names and numbers and stuff for people in their state so they can be recruited. It's, so. it's actually better if you do it, if you go to a zip code database or a geographical <laughs> database and you put down a zip code and you say, within what are the zip codes within 50 miles of this place? Because if you do by state, you'll find, you know, Kentucky has a whole lot, but that's because there's areas of Kentucky that are near more populated areas that yada yada. So you have to be a little careful. All the, all the people who could form an Iowa section actually live in Wisconsin on the other side of the river in Illinois, right? But we can do that. All you got to do is ask. If you got if you want to put a new section in, let Randy know. He'll run a query and get you all the people nearby. Joyce, do you have results? I do. Are you ready for them now? Well, wait. Let's see if there's more questions. I just want to, didn't want to spring it on you. Oh. Okay. Yes. Okay, I do have one that came in from one of our members. Actually, he's an ex-member. Went to CMAS. Probably know him. Sam Feinberg uh, ran Narcon last year. Okay. Anyway, why is he an ex-member? 
because he moved to Massachusetts. And oh, 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 X-Men, not x Nar member. No, x Lunar oh, member. Okay. Sorry. I care about I'm trying to shorten this up. Okay. <laughs> anyway, he says, uh, the guys here want to set up a scholarship fund for TARC teams in the name of Bill Spatafora, and they want to keep it local for the CMAS area. The catch is that CMAS, like most NAR sections, isn't a registered nonprofit. NAR lets people use its nonprofit status for national events, but not local activities. It would be great if there was a mechanism for having NAR oversee or manage local funds like this. So basically, is there a way to spread your nonprofit or nonprofit umbrella to locals for the purpose of like fundraising for scholarships? And so we looked into the last part of your question, and that's really hard. Oh, is it? Well, that, that's, it's the whole, hard to, that's the whole it's, question. It's hard to let a local section use the NARS nonprofit status for their own local activities. However, However, it may not be so hard for the national organization to sponsor a local scholarship. But I don't know. So we'll, we'd have to ask that question separately. Right? So, so, we'll, so <coughs> theoretically, we could make a, a, make a, a scholarship in the honor of a uh, past respected member and just name it after that person, and we would we would collect money as a national organization from whoever respects that and put it in the bank for that person. For that, as a national they, and then they can use it for however they set it up. We, the, yeah. I think the idea is they want to collect money in the CMAS area and give the, you know, the, it may make sense. But we could probably do. I'd like to get an opinion before I definitely said yes, yeah. and I'd like to get a semi-formal proposal. We were talking about a similar sort of thing at, lunch, at dinner the other night because mm -hmm. um, we give out a lot of scholarships, and so it could be done. Yeah. All right. Well, we need to get we need to get formal legal advice. Advice. Okay. We, yeah. Yeah. Trip. I want to talk about that for just a minute. So there there are a number of TART teams whose parents have set up. There are a number of very enterprising TART teams or school programs that support TART that have set up their own 501c3s locally to do what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not uncommon. There are probably 10 or 20 of them in the country that are operating that way. They're independent of the NAR section. They're just a team has set up a for X school TARC team. So you can set them up relatively easily at the lower really? level. Actually, that was my next question. Yeah. How difficult is it to set up a section? Depends as a on the state law. Well, I wouldn't tie it to the NAR or to a section. You can set up a nonprofit fund like that relatively easily. Call it whatever you want and use it for that purpose. Okay. And that's you know, tying it to the NAR makes it complicated and makes the generally makes the right. treasurer's face think, turn white. I think he was just looking for a way to sort of. Yeah, but, but a whole bunch of people. Oh, whoa. <laughs> a whole bunch of TARC teams have broken that code and figured out how to do it. I can ask them how they did it if you're interested. I can try to collect that would, information. Yeah. This isn't the first time this has come up. So no, it's it's being done. Um, I looked into it for a different reason. If you do it, if you do it at the state level, the state laws really matter. Uh -huh. so, so, and the main reason for doing it, well, you need to do it on both levels so that your charitable contribution will be deductible on both. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they have to make all kinds of adjustments in their state tax return. Nobody wants to do that. So, right. a little bit depends on the state you're in to do the state side. But 501c3 from the Feds is allegedly easy to get a provisional number, and then you sit for days and days, and weeks and months and years before it becomes official official because somebody right. was fooling around at the IRS and now nobody gets a charitable designation anymore. Yes, sir. Uh, for the RCP process, it yes. seems like a lot of the uh, proposals go away over a word or two. Uh, one suggestion might be is to modify the process for something like NFPA is to add a third category to accept the principle if it's you know, primarily just a wording thing. So, so I expect that this contest um, and National Events Committee will come back with a raft of suggestions for how to f not fix but amend the pink book to make things like change, to make change easier, um, to make provisional things especially easier. And that might very well be a good part of that, because we, we kind of do it as a vote up, you know, you do your thumbs up, thumbs down, it's like the, it's like the Roman, Roman Coliseum, right? So 
yeah, if, if only you had said five instead of four, or if only you had said may instead of shall, I, I hear you. On the other hand, we have the integrity of our existing process to maintain, and people feel strongly about doing that. So it has to be done delicately, but I agree. <laughs> Just a thought. Yeah. Others? Sorry. Joyce? Joyce has some scholarship announcements to make as well. Do you have that? You don't, I just, that was my reminder to you to bring that page up. And I have a checkbook. So, in fact, I have two. So, travel grant folks, um, I can give you the checks. And if there's any scholarship people here, I doubt that, that will happen. You want to do the checkbook? Okay, do you want me to do the election first? What do you guys I say? <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, election sure. first. Okay. We had six um, candidates this year, which was really wonderful to have an election with so much interest in people running for the board. And if you are interested in running for the board next year, we need your nomination. You can nominate yourself or have someone else nominate you by April 1st of 2016. And you can write, send your nomination to me and I'll help you get your resume together and your, your photo and whatever else. Get it into the model racketeer. So our um, election winners are, with 217 votes, Mark Wise. Uh, with 212 votes, John Lingle. And with 206 votes, Ed LaCroix. So congratulations. Okay, with the, for the other three contestants, um, Randy Gilbert received 153 votes. Um, Ed Chess received 124 votes, and Art Applewhite received 74 votes. So we had a, a good spread between the top three, and so I don't think we're going to have any recounts of the ballots, but I do keep them for six months, so in case you know. Okay, um, I would like to find out ab about whether the travel grant winners are here. Are any of them here today? Would you stand up? We just have one. Okay, so this is um, Oli James IV. Thanks for being here. So um, we, we have four travel grant winners. I haven't met them all yet. But tomorrow on the sport range, William Armbruster wanted to do a presentation on convertible drag racers that he's developed. So that'll be on the sport range. I'll try to put a time up on on this advertisement that's out in the lobby, and it's also outside this room. And then on Thursday are the R&D presentations for A and B division, not Wednesday. Usually we have A and B first. But this year, the schedule says A and B is on Thursday. So um, right before that, we're going to have three presentations by, the, our, by our travel grant winners. Starting at 5 o'clock, Ole James is going to talk about his rocketry experiences. At 5.15, Ben O'Colland is going to talk about testifying in front of the California Assembly and helping to get the law changed on model rocketry in California. Which worked, by the way. Yeah, that was successful. So, <laughs> we'll about his experience with that. And at 5.30, Kaysen Chalk is going to talk about uh, his TARC um, model rocket with onboard flight control. So those will be 15-minute or so presentations at 5 o'clock Thursday. And the rest of R&D will be on um, the Thursday from 6 to 7.30 for A and B. And for C Division, it's Wednesday. We're going to start it at 5.30 p.m. And all those presentations are in this room. So we would invite you all to attend. OK, for the scholarship and the canon winners, um, this year, the board was very generous, and we had a good year with a um, mem good high membership, and um, our dues were coming in, so we were able to award more scholarships this year. Unfortunately, we still had more applicants than we had money awarded, or money available. So um, we, could, we had 23 applicants, and we made 10 $2,000 awards, as we promised, and we also found another $6,000 to give six more $1,000 awards. So the winners this year, some of these are renewals, people that won in the past. 
and some of them are new. And next year we may try to split those out because we're getting so many renewals, people applying in second, third, and fourth year for college, and that could tie up all our money. So we may want to start a pot for new and a pot for renewals. So this year, our 10 winners are Michaela Alexander, who is going to Penn State, majoring in aerospace engineering. Congratulations. Um, Russell Berry, going to Cal State Long Beach, majoring in aerospace engineering. This is the predominant major, aerospace engineering. Um, Adam Gerhardt, which is interesting because the space program seems like it's in decline. And that we have these young people coming in, and I have a lot of hope for the future if they're going to major in aerospace. We're going to want to do something in space. So third one is Adam Gerhardt going to James Madison University, majoring in chemistry and secondary education. Silas Graff, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, majoring in aerospace engineering. Daniel Kelton, Texas A&M, majoring in aerospace engineering. Kirsten Ma, University of Washington, majoring in microbiology. Karen Marr, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, majoring in aerospace engineering. Magdalena Moses, Virginia Tech, majoring in electrical engineering and mathematics. Philip Rangich, Missouri University of Science and Technology, majoring in mining engineering. There's an interesting major there. Uh, Jacob Stab, Washington University, majoring in mechanical engineering. So those are our 10 $2,000 winners. And for our extra bonus $1,000 winners, Ishan Aurora, from, uh, going to Virginia Tech, majoring in aerospace engineering. Jacob Berger, Arizona State University, majoring in mechanical or aerospace engineering. Ryan Kinsler, Fort Hayes State University, majoring in agronomy. Nathan Putira, Embry-Riddle, majoring in aerospace. Matthew Rangich, University of Oklahoma, majoring in mechanical engineering. And Cassidy Steele from Brigham Young, majoring in social work. So those are our 10. And said there were many that we couldn't even award. Thank you. And thank you to our 10 judges. Many of you are here. Maybe our judges that are here could stand up. Uh, Bob and Mark and Jennifer and Mark Johnson and uh, Vince Hugley is back there. Who am I missing? Uh, Ryan. So some of them are trustees and some of them are longtime judges and some of them are relatively new. We had some new judges this year who aren't at the mark. Okay, for the Canon winners, we had seven Canon winners, and one of them I think we're going to put into the extracurricular activity grant winner category because his um, program is primarily after school instead of part of the curriculum. But the seven winners are from all over the country. Ralph Rise, Lake Roosevelt, Junior Senior High School, from Cooley Dam, Washington, John Benvenuti, Dr. John C. Page Elementary, West Newberry, Massachusetts, Marcy Farmer, Sanborn Central Middle School, Letcher, South Dakota, Jerry Ayakona, William Robinson School, Hamilton Township, New Jersey, Daniel Maloney, LaSalle Institute, Troy, New York, Mark Nowatney, Wyoming Star Base Academy, Cheyenne, Wyoming, Alan Pritchard, Waccama High School, Polly Island, South Dakota, South Carolina, excuse me, South Carolina. So again, they're from all over, and some of these have applied before, and some of these have applied for the first time. So again, thank you for all the judges, many of whom were the same for Canada Scholarship, who, who also judged this event. Okay, thanks, I, that's all my announcements. I want to give uh, kudos to Joyce because she's probably the busiest NAR member of all in about the last two months. So thank you for running it. She's another, one that, she's another one that will suffer if we get really successful and do $50,000 next year. <laughs> <laughs> Any last questions? Yes. Yeah, Ted, um, recently I've seen a lot of news coverage of drones and saw one where they had designed it to shoot guns off of drones. And I envisioned the possibility of model rockets being shot from drones. And 
I don't want to see one with Estes on the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> but especially if it hits the logo, right? But I, I believe there is an effort to make more controls over low airspace, and I just want to be sure that you're looking out and watching things like that. Yeah, uh, I, I get an email or two about that, um, like every day. The AMA is the carrying the, the banner the hardest for that because they have the most to lose. Um, the FAA thinks that if you're in Class A airspace and you fly a paper glider across a room that's probably under their jurisdiction, <laughs> it's somebody. And certainly if you fly it outside, it does. Um, so there's there's a challenge. Everybody's going to be challenged by this, and I don't think that it can be the. I don't think the lid can be put back on as easily as the FAA seems to think, and I don't think that um, I think we'll be all right. I think that what will make it happen, bad things happen quick, is if people keep being stupid and doing dumb things and then putting it on the internet. The guy that the guy that did the gun, and the guy there was a TV show on one of the cable channels about this uh, gunsmith in Louisiana. He did a similar thing on the TV show, which was even dumber. He got a visit from the ATF. The guy that did the YouTube got a visit from the ATF. So they're all over the really egregious stuff. Um, there was a case of a fire that was trying to be fought. The, the one hopped the interstate in California and burned a bunch of cars, and they had to um, st stop fighting the fire with helicopters until they got the news drones and the private drones off. It's just ridiculous. So people have to be a little bit more sensible. Um, we, we think that because, I think, I hope, that because we have such a long history of working with both the FAA and the other authorities that they understand that we are not drones. Um, but we still have to be careful. I get asked a lot, you know, is this kind of guidance legal? Is this kind of guidance legal? And the, the answer is, very complicated because it depends on what a prosecutor wants to charge you with and how much of a name he wants to make for himself, right? If you make a, a rocket that is capable of flying straight up because you use accelerometers, I'm not going to argue with you, but I would be very careful because if it can be reprogrammed to go against a target, then it's a weapon of mass destruction according to the law. So you got to be careful. Ted, I've answered that question in the past. The basic rule of thumb to apply is a weapon is an energy delivery device. If the rocket cannot deliver destructive energy, it is not a weapon. So a sun seeker, for example, while the term sun seeker is socially unacceptable to many people, the fact is it can never intercept its target. Right. Any energy. right. Right. Uh, <laughs> autopilots, again, they're not going, they're not seeking right. the target. Going up is fine if it's limited to going up. Right. right. Well, even coming down, if you have GPS, if it's coming back on a parachute, that you're coming in at low energy, right. again. We had a lot of auto guiding parachute attempts at SLI in past years. I don't know that any particularly well succeeded, but eh. But the, again, the test I apply is, as an RSO is, can you deliver destructive energy? My, my point is, read all the laws before you <coughs> tackle a project like that, because you could be very, we have, yeah, you could be very surprised. It's, it's um, a challenging environment that we live in legally, as well as politically. Yeah, Ted, yeah. Mike. Sorry, go ahead. My concern partly is that many lawmakers are not skilled right. in the things that Period. we you, know you can about. stop right there. <laughs> and, you know, they put wording in there that might... Well, you, you I hear you. Them. I hear you. Yeah, I, I have a, a bunch of Google News alerts, and I'm, and I, a lot of people tell me, have you heard about this? Have you heard about that? So okay. we'll, we'll do the best we can. It's not to say we can't be surprised, because some of these things can pop up at midnight in a, you know, a, a reconciliation bill or something like that that nobody's read, and they just vote on it, and there it is, you know. And then you're in court again, and we don't want to do that. Um, two things. Um, one of those fires, the drone was at 11,000 feet, meaning it was a military drone. <laughs> the other thing is be careful with that definition because, I mean, all you need is a rocket and not to deploy it to cover device. I mean, just look it's at what we've done. It's not the intent of the, of the rocket, though. Oh, I'm, intent. Just, I'm just talking about those those young prosecutors wanting to make a name for mm -hmm. themselves. So just, I mean, just because they can't convict you doesn't mean you, they can't make your life unhappy. Yes, sir. So what 
Vernon was saying in terms of being a little bit more proactive, and you mentioned the AMA and what AMA has done to the membership and gotten in with industry leaders in the RC is to put a information bulletin or sign on and say, you know, be, please be aware of this. Is that something that maybe that NAR might want to be a signature to? For rockets? For doing, putting rockets on drones and stuff, understanding that these rules apply if, if you're flying in the airspace. I'm not saying they should, but I'm just wondering if that's what he was asking. So, I'm, no, I, I'm thinking not. I mean, Estes might. So we could talk to Estes and say, well, what do you think? But, you know, they, they sell all their stuff in Walmart. And most of the instructions get thrown away with the packaging. And <laughs> I, it's, it's spending money that we don't have on a problem that is, doesn't exist until somebody makes it into one. I don't know. I mean, it's, like, it's kind of a messy area. Yes, sir. We need to find a way to make the message consistent that we ask people, please don't do anything stupid with the technology <laughs> you can. Some people's definition is exactly stupid. Or what's getting people in trouble. Yeah, I, know, I hear you. The gun, the gun guy actually with the, the pistol on the drone actually said that he did it because he could. I know, and I, I hear you. And he probably would get away with it more than a rocket guy would. And yeah, keep in mind. Putting and the right to bear arms. Like, putting a yeah. gun on a drone isn't necessarily stupid. He didn't actually do anything wrong, well, but it was certainly a stupid time to do it. it well, he, he called <laughs> attention to himself in a way that wasn't helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I like to stay out of the politics of all this stuff, but eventually, you know, when it when they're gnawing at your rear end, it's hard to stay out of. Boom. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Not a question, but a comment. Um, you probably all know me by now. I'm Tom Ha, the NAR treasurer for the organization. When you hear about the cannon grants going out to the teachers, $500 grants to them because they're doing rocketry in the classrooms, the money that comes to do that is the cannon auction that is held every year at NARAM. So anybody who is buying things there, that money gets set aside in a tempor like temporarily restricted fund uh, in the NAR's bookkeeping system to be used specifically for that purpose. So anybody who uh, has the, the ability to uh, bid on things at the NARAM auction, please realize that 100% of those monies are set aside for the Canon Fund to help support education and teachers out there do, doing model rocketry. There's an amazing quote that's, that's going to be in that auction, too. Yeah. 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 Or you've all seen it. Other questions? Going once, going twice. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Thank you very much.